75th test between these two nations, and I'm sure those two there, number eight, Kurt Sorensen, big, strong, 15 and a half stone forward. He'll be proud of this day. New Zealand, of course, in the traditional colours, all black with the white, edging in the white V. And Great Britain in a new look strip, a new modern strip. I was speaking to the Rugby League's PR man, David Howes, beforehand. All white strip with the red and blue V and the dark shorts and the dark stockings. You see them first touch of the ball. And I think one or two of these forwards will want to get an early touch today, Alec. Yes, uh, Ray, it could be very important how uh, both sides settle down in the early stages. Um, Great Britain will like to run with the ball, I'm sure, you know, get the feel of the ground and uh, bring one or two of the new lads into the game. Well, this looks a bit of an old-fashioned kicking game, both sides, but the jaw line and picked it up nicely. But reminiscent of the sort of full-back kicking game we used to have in the, the 40s and the 50s. And referee from Australia, Barry Gummissel, right on the spot there. And Derek Fox just having a word with the pack, Harry Pinner urging them on. Good, sound, sensible kick there from Lee Crooks. Great Britain first attack. They've been in training this week for three days at Oldham, so they should have one or two rules worked out. To Crooks, number eight. Driving in, well looked after by number 13 for New Zealand, Hugh McGann, and... Kurt Sorensen, Fox, to go, oh, that was an excellent tackle. Good tackle in there from Fred Arcoy. To Pinner, Pinner, we weaving, dodging. This is the man I think that New Zealand are going to have to pick up, Alec, Harry Pinner. Yes, and I think you'll find he'll get a lot of close attention. Uh, but he'll be interested to see the tactics of Great Britain in the early stages. They want to move the ball, I think they can crack the New Zealanders if they move the ball about. Well, certainly a good opportunity there for John Fieldhouse. Six tackle coming up to Pinner. A lob one. Lulu eyes under it. Oh, it's loose. It's a try. No. Yes, he's given it. Oh, good try already. Andy Goodway. Little chip kick from Harry Pinner. Andy Goodway on the spot. Referee Barry Gummerson, I think, a little unsighted at first. Not to his touch judges, but it's 4 0 to Great Britain. was a snap try there from Goodway. Well, this is uh, really the start Great Britain really needed. A lovely little chip from Harry Pinner here. Just watch the flight of the ball. It goes up there. Harry Pinner in support. A bit of bad full-back play here. Goodway's there. And, yes, he gets on the ball for the first try. Mick Burke should be a comparatively straightforward kick. It is. Yes, well, what a better start could we have? Three minutes gone, six points to nil for Great Britain. So the Lion roaring with a vengeance now. It was interesting to see the referee there, Barry Gummersall. Typical Australian practice confused me for a second. I must admit, he, he looked as if he was disallowing the try, but no, it's the practice there to stand on the line and consult the touch judges before giving it. Britain pin. Back to line. I think both sides very keen to play this game in the opposite half. To Lula. Bit of a gamble this playing Lula Wyatt full back. Obviously looking to him coming in attack. Clayton Frank to Philippine. Very big strong 15 stone fall. Stand off this boy Philippine. to friend oh good ball there to Kai good slick handling by these New Zealanders not a breath of wind about perfect conditions sun streaming down here oh and Drummond's ball 
A little bit too easy going there, Alec. Yes, I, I think we're finding, Ray, that the New Zealand uh, boys are not even supporting the men. Uh, this is a, the thing they normally do well, but uh, the great bit in tackling, they're moving up very quickly. Uh, I think what we've got now is to uh, say is, uh, are we going to move up too quickly? First kick then to Great Britain. And I think there was some discussion there as to whether one could go for goal or not, but Crooks, well, he's electing to go for touch. And just content to put it in the touch there. No great gain in yardage from Lee Crooks, number eight. Watkinson. Oh, good slip past the pinner. But an obstruction. Yes, it was well intended, that, a good move, bringing the ball round the blind side, obviously hoping to pull the New Zealand forwards back across to the touchline, but a little bit of obstruction, using another player as a shield. And it's number 12, Owen Wright, to put to touch. Another six-foot-five man, 15 stone, huge second row, this New Zealand pair. Both six foot five, Graham and Wright, both 15 and a half and 16 stone. And Dane Solis. Great Britain moving up very, very quickly into the tackle. Oh, the drive from Graham, he's a tall lad, still going. Up to Arcoy. Kurt Sorensen now. This handling from New Zealand looking ominous already. To Dane Sorensen. Both of these brothers, the Sorensen brothers, tremendous workhorses. Clayton Friend trying the same tactic as Harry Pinner. McGann's there. Ooh. Well, we saw McGann, Hugh McGann in sports night against the under 21 scored a try very very similar to that it's his speciality six foot two very athletic almost there to pinner oh good ball to crooks oh good ball there to score looking for support but no support excellent forward play there from pinner but handley on the move now to fox Pin it again. Put this ball now. Oh, but he's dropped it. Well, a bad miss there by Joe Lyden, but I don't think he would have got in. The cover was coming across. There were three or four New Zealand players coming across. But it's certainly nice to see Alec the way England are moving it out. Well, this is beautiful football by uh, Great Britain. Just what Chanley is, a very, very strong boy. Draws the men in. Now, this is the man now, young Derek Fox. A lovely ball out. Watch Pin. Wait, should Joe Lydon. Raid in his hand, just takes his eye, his eye off the ball. But would he have scored anyway? Clayton Friend. And Dean Bell, yes. He's having a word with John Fieldhouse. Get back, he says. A bit of a high tackle there. I think he'll be keen, he'll be eager to get into this game, John Fieldhouse. It's his first match for Great Britain. And Wright, once again, to put to touch. New Zealand already had four matches on this tour. They've won three. The only defeat they had was the opening match against Wigan. already getting through a lot of work to friend oh this this forward a tremendous player this this captain mark graham six foot five 16 stone and yet he can run like a back friend again moving this ball out wide philippine oh good going from philippine a good tackle from fieldhouse five yards from this great britain line long ball oh yes and he's in Excellent try, nine minutes gone, Dane O'Hara, a formality for there, the Kiwi wingman. All made, I think, originally from that Mark graham Bake, but certainly these Kiwis, they're moving this ball about quick. 
looks as if we're a high scoring game here Well, this is what uh, Great Britain didn't want. Quick play of the ball, quick hands here. Lovely ball from Matt Graham. To Fred Akoy just holds the ball to Brome. And uh, Dana Ward has the simplest of tasks. Yes, it, it, it was the simplest of tasks, Alec. And yet, uh, he seems to take them so simple. I've, I've seen him score a few of these at Hull. But it's a very, very difficult kick right out on the touchline but this man Filipina already kicked four goals on this tour only takes a very very short run back interesting to see him too he doesn't follow the usual style of kickers these days the sort of round the instep style straightforward kicker but got very very big thighs on him to give a real whack to this ball and he gives one but no no goal. So New Zealand then still trailing six points to four. Well, this is what Great Britain didn't want. Quick hands by now, New Zealand, but just watch this ball from Mark Graham. A beautiful ball to Gary Prom, runs in the gap, goes Dano Ada, and for the simplest task, he likes them. New Zealand and still in possession. Dean Bell. Good tackling here from Great Britain side there from Potter and Watkinson. And McGann. Interesting to see both sides pumping this ball downfield. Obviously wanting to keep the opposition deep down in the opposition's own half. To pin. Tony Meyer. suddenly from looking very very confident in those opening minutes Great Britain looked to be a little bit shot by that try I think well that was a fortunate ricochet to Fox but we shouldn't underestimate I think the strength of this New Zealand tackling it's very fierce very strong oh good combination play there again from Crooks and Penner Fox to Hanley he's got Fieldhouse with him just couldn't get away. Good cover tackle there from Hugh McGowan. Ellery Hanley. Powerful. Fox. Well, he's only a little lad, is this? Garrick Fox from Featherston Row was only 20 years of age, but good player. James Robinson. Howie Tamati. Howie Tamati, the oldest player at 31 on this New Zealand side. Oof. <laughs> That's what we were saying about this standoff Philippine. You don't see many men built like this at standoff, Alec, do you? No, if you went into a butcher's ray and asked for two like him, I think they'd have to get him off the back shelf. He's a really big man. He's 16 stone and he runs straight. He doesn't believe running around anybody if he goes the shortest route right through. Still New Zealand then, on the tack, James Lulua linking up here. This was one of the reasons why the coach, Graham Lowe, played this man, Lulua centre, that full-back, to link up, provide an extra level of attack to Burke. Penner. Pinner looking round there, obviously wanting some support, wanting his forwards to come with him. Tony Myler. Nice to see both these sides trying to open the game out, moving the ball to Fox. This Great Britain side have been preparing for this series all the summer they've had a week's training camp at Lillyshaw they've had weekends at Carnegie College so there's no excuses for them they should be fit they should be well planned and well organised David Watkinson Oof. Watkinson really driving hard there led with the right Ian Potter 
some very good tackling coming off here, Alec. Yes, and uh, I like the way that Great Britain are moving the ball about. They're opening uh, New Zealand up when they do uh, things like this, and there is another chance gone begging. Well, lucky there for Derek Schofield. But it's still Great Britain in possession. Ball obviously came off a New Zealand player. Des Drummond, first touch of the ball. This was the man who scored two tries to level the series here on this ground in 1980. To Crooks. Oh, good kick. Excellent pinpoint kick from Lee Crooks. And I think that just shows something of the, the tightness of this New Zealand defence. We tend to think of Crooks as a very, very experienced player, yet... He's only 22. Andy Goodway, number 11, already looks to have a knock on his right ankle. Well, play on, says referee Gunnison. Well, I think under the laws, I think it should come out behind the second row, but that didn't, did it? Well, I think uh, the referee was quite right there, because he, he believed that New Zealand kicked it out and uh, was responsible for the stoppage. But what is going to be interested is the scrum because, um, you know, Howie Tamate, he loved to win the scrums over here and um, this is what we're, New Zealand will be relying on. Oh, that's a good ball to Schofield. Looking for Drummond. Well, he's a quick... <laughs> he's a quick lad, is Des Drummond, but he doesn't escape the clutches of Olsen Filipina. Watkinson now. Likes to run from this dummy half position. One advantage that this brings is that it, it tends to suck the New Zealand forwards in. Fox, oh, that's a good one. It's well planned. Luna lies under it. He's missed it again. But offside. Yes, and, and Barry Gummerso right on the spot. Someone. Little bit of back chat against his decision. They call this referee the grasshopper in Australia, and he certainly hopped across the grass there. He was right on the spot. Well, this is this has been a problem here with New Zealand. Have they taken a chance playing Lulai there? And he does drop it again, and I think Rayburn can capitalise on this. Well, a penalty there to Owen Wright again. And I don't think. Coach Morris Bamford would be very happy with that back chat in there, Alec. I know he wanted to cut that sort of thing out. Well, I think that's bad discipline, and uh, obviously it's in the heat of the moment, Ray, but uh, you, you'll find out when players get a little bit excited, uh, if they're made that way, they're bound to be a little bit of back chat, but nothing serious. To Clayton Friend. Owen Wright. Harry Penn is certainly having a good game, good leadership. To Lee Crooks. to Fox, pin it again Fieldhouse oh that's a dangerous ball which Schofield's managed to get hold of it a very very dangerous looking pass there from John Fieldhouse but Gary Schofield just managed to get hold of it Tony Myler he's got the gap, he's got the break he's got Pinner with him to Hanley just couldn't get it through Still Great Britain ball and six tackle coming up to Fox. Well, he's certainly peppering James Lunawai with these. Burks with it. Just misses it. But what an effort there from that fullback Mick Burke. 14 stone man, not the fastest of the species, yet he got up from fullback himself almost to get that try. Good effort there, I think, Alec. Yes, and the interesting thing about it is, Ray, how uh, that Great Britain are just uh, moving up and opening uh, New Zealand up very, very easily. They're drawing them into the middle and they're moving it out wide and they're finding lots and lots of gaps on the flanks. To Mark Gray. Oh, that was a good a crunching run there from Mark Gray. I think one of the advantages of these two second rows at six foot five, they can get the tacklers around them and then get the ball out like that. Clayton Fred having a go on his own. Dane Solens still keeping it going. Kurt. Philippina. 
well covered by Tony Myler. Good clash between these two standoffs. It described, I think, as the broadsword against the rapier. And there's the man number six. No one guesses for who's the broadsword. Pinner again. Oh, another loose ball from Fieldhouse to Schofield to Drummond. Oh, that was a good pass. Well, Drummond's only got a second roll. He's outside him. Can he go on his line? Oh, good break. Good run from Des Drummond. But let's give Clayton Friend a pat on the back there, this New Zealand scrum half. He got a cross covering there. 20 minutes gone in this half. Still Great Britain clinging to that. Six points to four lead. And looking, looking good for the lead, I think, Alec. Yes, I think uh, deserve the uh, to be in front, and they're looking very good actually. They're, they're looking a lot better and a lot sharper in New Zealand. Uh, they've not been really playing as well as people say on this tour. They, you know, they've been playing matches where a lot of people have said, "Well, are they as good as what they said?" Is it paper talk? Certainly, I think this is a, is a vastly improved Great Britain uh, side to the last side I saw down under in Auckland and Christchurch. But there's a long, long way to go yet. Dan O'Hara. But they look eager. One or two of these younger lads, like Fox, coming in. Gary Schofield, uh, good tackling. To Arcoy. Well, it's anybody's. And it looks like John Fieldhouse. It is. Pinner. Football. Harry Pinner here, skipper at first receiver, but Hanley going on his own. Very strong lad. Back to Pinner again. Oops, attempted trip. Yes. Referee Barry Gomesel right on the spot there. I think more of an instinctive reaction there from Clayton Friend. I don't think there was anything malicious or deliberate about it. Well, this is Harry Pinner. You just watch as he slips down, and Clayton Friend does stick his leg out, but I don't think it was any, uh, anything serious, but it will be a penalty. Yes, and it could be a vital two points. He's been in good kicking form this season, uh, Mick Burke. He's got 29 goals already. He has suffered from a back injury, missed a, a match or two for witness early in the season, but thankfully seems to have got over that problem. Just outside the 25 and to the left of the posts. The sort of one that don't usually give too many problems. Oh, but it does. Hits the post. Well, that was a let-off there from McBurkey. Shakes his head. And who knows, that two points could prove vital, Alec. Yes, and uh, it's very, very unusual that he misses kicks like that. And uh, he'll be a little bit disappointed, but uh, we, we can't be disappointed the way Great Britain are playing. They're, they're playing exceptionally good football. And really, in New Zealand, they're looking a little bit ragged, Ray. I think one of the reasons, Alec, is the, the tackling, certainly... Uh, coach Morris Bamford brought in John Fieldhouse and Ian Potter and Watkinson, I think, to do a stint of tackling, and they're doing it. Well, I think what happened was that uh, I said to the lads, you know, we don't need to uh, be disrespectful to New Zealand, we just play them as though they're people. And we are doing this, and we're just taking them as they are normally. Oh, good run there. Howie Tamati, he's got no support. Oh, the crunching tackle from Mitberg. I think we can see the skill and the speed and the pace in this New Zealand side. They can come back any time. Go to Luluai. Still going. Sorensen. Oh, he's going for the corner there. He must be in. Yes. Dean Bell, no problem. And we saw New Zealand there come suddenly back from defence into attack. Good combination play in midfield. And Dean Bell there playing in his 10th test. First try of the season, and a vital one puts New Zealand in the lead.
Well, this is what we say about New Zealand. When you just write them off, they come back and make you eat your words. A lovely break by Lulai. Some tremendous supporting player by Sorensen, who slips the ball out to Clayton Friend, to Dean Bell, and he goes over, only behind him, but he just gets over in the corner. Well, it looks as though we've transported Blackpool Beach here, but this is the way that the kick goes these days. And I must say, never having kicked a goal in my life, I don't think I could ever argue with them. So Philip Piner then, another very, very difficult kick, similar to his last one, only on the other side of the field. But certainly, the game is going from end to end. Tremendous strength, this man. Just a couple of steps back, almost prods the ball over. But not this time. So, having trailed by two points, New Zealand now lead by two points. Eight points to six now to the Kiwis. And like I say, lovely break here by James Leelai, but just look at the support, Kurt Sorison, a lovely ball to Clayton Friend. Now, Dean Bell, he's got pace, and so has only the man chasing him, and he just makes it. So Britain then, oh. kicking deep. Bell just slipping on this lush turf here at Headingley. to right oh that's a good ball to Prome Prome inside to O'Hara and I think one of the things that's troubling this Great Britain side is the support play of these New Zealanders they're very fit they're very fast and they back up yes a penalty fisting there and Olsen Filipina looks a little bit worse than were but I'm sure that Magic Sponge will bring him back. Having a very good game, this referee, Barry Gummersall. I first came across him up at Townsville and Rockhampton, right out on that far Queensland course, and he had a couple of good games there against the, the Great Britain side. So New Zealand then back on the attack. Oh, good ball. These two Sorensen brothers in the front row are causing some problems, Alec. Well, I think, Ray, why they're causing a the problem is probably because they're a stone and a man heavier. The New Zealand pack is, is one stone and a half heavier than the Great Britain pack, and surely that must take its effect uh, as they keep supporting the men like they are, especially with Graham and uh, Lulai coming in support like this. Oh, yes, this is good rugby. Howie Tamati. They're coming in twos, they're coming in threes, and Great Britain really up against it here. Akoi, Filipina. Well, he played that himself to McGann. Oh, good pass there. And he's over. Yes. Mark Graham. Excellent try. The long reach. Those Kiwi supporters delighted at that try from Mark Graham. But in all honesty, it came from the quick thinking down of Olsen Filipina. In rugby league, you don't have to play the ball back behind to the receiver. You can tap the ball to yourself if there's nobody marking. Filipina saw that, the gap was there, and the opportunity was there for Graham. Well, big lad again. Now, just watch. Is this bad play? Taps it forward to himself, and always in support, the New Zealand players. Here he is, McGann, and just watch Mark Graham. This ballad is the best second row in the world, and can, this is why. And he certainly needs some stopping about a yard from the line. Alec was mentioning the stoner man difference, and uh, I think this is beginning to tell now. And should be a comfortable kick for Filipina. Checking his time. New Zealand already got those three tries from O'Hara, Bell and now Graham. A 
and the first opportunity for Philip Heiner to put some points on the board for himself. And he does, no problem, so 14 points to six for the Kiwis now. And what a way to come back after that 6-0 deficit in the first three minutes. So Great Britain now, plenty to do. Lee Crooks along the floor. Well, that was a good kick from Lee Crooks. I walked on this pitch this morning, it was very, very wet from the overnight dew, and it is skidding along, and I think he was playing for a knock-on. Ten minutes to half-time, and I think a very, very vital ten minutes here from Great Britain. They've got to stop these New Zealand forwards from coming on the rampage, and they've got to consolidate. And this is the man who's causing the problems, Mark Graham, the strength of him, the size. Oh, good ball. Kurt Sorensen, he's got Dean Bell with him. Beats one man, two men. Oh, magnificent cover tackle there from Fox. Fox and Fieldhouse coming across. But superb play from the Kiwis. Mark Graham shrugs off Des Drummond. What Des Drummond's doing in the middle there, I don't know. Well, I think he is helping out. And it looks like Graham's taking a knock. This would be a tragedy for the Kiwis if he was to have a problem. He's certainly been the most effective forward, Alec. Yes, he has, and uh, it'll be tragic if he, he has got a knock here. It looks as though he's got um, one in the rib somewhere around that region. But you'll find out that he's a big lad and he'll soon be up. I think as captain too, he'll not want to go off. No, Barry Gummersell wants it playing again. And he's signalling that this is the sixth tackle too, I think. Filipina attempt to drop. To Burke. To Goodwin. Great Britain certainly got to come back into this game. Yes, offside. This lad, number eight, Kurt Sonnenson, is really pounding in here. He certainly looks G'd up. But a relieving penalty here to Great Britain. Great Britain, of course, got the upper hand in the test between these two sides. The... 48 wins to 24, but the New Zealanders achieved a whitewash in 84-3-0, and they're in the lead here by 14 points to six, so a lot to do from Great Britain. Lee Crooks, crowd now trying to get behind this Great Britain side, they could do with some points before half-time, it's a good way. these Great Britain forwards really escaping the clutches of the tackle, only Pinner oh, good ball from Pinner to Tony Myler oh, yes, play on at least Harry Pinner's trying to open the game out to Alan. Yes, Ray, and I think the reason the crowd is giving the Great Britain a little bit of stick is because some of the forwards are beginning to walk about and not support like the New Zealand players are and this is what they're doing a little bit of shouting about. Pinner Again, go, good ball to Schofield. So, good spell here now from Great Britain. Watkinson. Yeah, six more tackles, it touched the New Zealand player to Fox. Yes, and as Alec was just saying, he's... Great Britain forwards are walking in support, they're not running in support, but here's a better run from Crooks. Oh, just couldn't get that ball away. But Britain now on the attack, edging forward. Tony Myler. No, knock on. Well, I think Tony Myler passed that ball to Harry Pinner, though, more in desperation than good effect. He certainly should have got the ball off to Ellery Hanley a little earlier on his outside. 
but there's certainly a lot of gaps opening up now. No, I don't think referee Paddy Gummersall would allow that. Yes, Howie Tamati handing the ball out of the back of the scrum. So a penalty to Graybrin, and of course, all penalties at the scrum, differential penalties, you can only go for goal or foul play. So five minutes to go in this half, and Great Britain certainly need a try now. To Fox, Pinner. Oh. Oh, good ball from Tony Myler to Drummond. We're just trying to put, I think, one pass in too many at the moment, Great Britain. To Fox. Oh, knock on. Almost a try, Alec. I think if he could have got the ball away. But Ray, you've got to really be looking at these as, as chances. We've got a, a three to one overlap on the outside, and we've got people like Goodway. All he had to do was catch the ball and, and he's putting them down. You cannot miss chances like this in international football. Yeah, certainly a very, very skilled side is this New Zealand team. But Great Britain ball again to Leiden. Oh, he's got the edge on the outside. Can he make it? Oh! Well, we saw something there of the speed of Joe Leiden. Just couldn't get there, but Britain on the attack. Pinner looking for support to Watkinson. But he was stood still. You can't stand still in test football. Pinner again. Tony Mayer. Oh, good tackle. Very good tackle from Fred Arcoy. Coming in, sense the danger. Knew that the ball couldn't be moved out to the right. Andy Goodwill. But a good attacking spell here from Great Britain to Fox, to Pinner. To Hanley. Oh, he's still going. Yes, he must be in. He's in. The strength of this lad. People call this boy Hanley the Pelly of British Rugby League. He's so unpredictable. He can score out of nothing. And he did do that. Brings fresh heart into this Great Britain crowd. Tremendous solo effort. And 14 points to 10 now. Just the try that Great Britain wanted. And it should be a simple kick for Mick Burke, although we said that of one of his previous ones and, and he missed it. But when you score a try like that, three minutes before half time, it gives you confidence. And that should add to the confidence. So, good reply from Great Britain. And this is a great reply from Great Britain, a beautiful ball to Hanley, the million-dollar man they call him, and when you see why, this is what he likes best, and this is what he does best. Yes, certainly some determined running from Ellery Hanley. Staggered the rugby league world when this man was signed by Wigan for £150,000. It was more like a soccer fee, but he's repaying it. He's kicking deep, I think, just coming up to half-time with a want to keep Great Britain down here. They'll, they'll be happy, they'll, uh, they'll settle at 14-12, I think. Andy Goodwin. It's two minutes to half-time, Great Britain, I think, consolidating. Derek Fox. This young number seven from Featherstone only came into the Great Britain squad last season. Had two very good games against France. Oh, that's a good kick, a relieving kick. I don't think Mick Burr will be too much bothered about touch. He wants to keep the Kiwis down here. Oof. <laughs> well, you don't, you don't put passes out like that to your friends, Alec, do you? Well, it's what they call in the trade where the hospital pass, and I think he nearly needed an hospital bed. But uh, that was a great reply from Great Britain. New Zealand will want to get back uh, up in the Great Britain half so that they, they can put a few points on the board as well. Pro to a half. There's one thing this number 10, John Fienhoff, certainly getting through a good defensive stint. Mark Graham. This is the man they've got to stop. Just look at the, the size of this man and the height. 
six foot five. You don't get many rugby league players at six foot five. Mainly rugby union with the line over, not rugby league players. But I think it gives him the, the added height to get the ball distribution. Oh, well taken by Dillon. Storming run from Goodway. He's got Hanley outside him. Got it to Lydon. Lydon's got the length of the field to go. He's got Lou Lawai. No, he slipped. And that's the slippiness that I mentioned about this grass. I said he was wet on top. Henry Hanley driving in now. Well, a penalty. Yes, a penalty there for interference in the tackle. Now, what's skipper Harry Pinner going to do? 40 minutes are up. Should he go for goal or should he put it into touch? What would you do, Alec? I don't know, there'll be any doubt what he'll do. He'll put this right between the sticks and he'll be happy to go in at 14 14. Well, he's taking your advice, Alec. He's going for goal. Excellent comeback there from Great Britain. Tremendous spirit, a little bit of that bulldog spirit coming back again. And I'm sure he'd be very, very happy if Mick Burke could just put this one over. Just on the 25-yard line, about 10 yards to the left of the posts. He swings it round, is he going? Oh, he's hit the post again. But it's bobbling, and it's Great Britain ball. Well, Mick Burke, he stoops low, he shakes his head, the hooter goes, Pinner tries a drop, no, and he misses it. But the half-time hooter gone, but I'm sure Great Britain, though, they'll go off this field, I think, a little bit better heart, but at 14 points to 12 for New Zealand, this is anybody's match. Rugby League's back very much. So, I don't think I can grumble anyway. But they might perform it for us if they win at the end. But uh, New Zealand, I think, 14 points to 12 in the lead. How, Ali, could you react if you were in charge of this Great Britain side now? Well, Ray, I'd be very, very pleased with our performance. I think uh, we've deserved to be in front uh, at half-time. I think Mick Burke has missed uh, two kickable goals, and I think uh, they look a bit vulnerable when we move the ball out wide. Uh, I think if we get the ball away quickly uh, to the flanks, uh, I think we could pinch this game. Well, it's interesting to see that number 14, Gary Campbell, the usual full full-back, come on for James Lulai. James Lulawai moved into the centre position there for Fred Arcoy. Lulawai's normal position is a centre. Campbell normally a fullback. I think there was something of a gamble in this New Zealand side. to Sorensen. Kurt Sorensen again, having a good, strong, driving game, this lad. He's certainly taking a lot of hammer out of the Great Britain side. Clayton Friend now, Philippine to Lulaway. I'm sure they'd be much happier here in the centre. It was a gamble that Graham Lowe took him playing him at fullback. It didn't come off, but he's got the resources to change it. Hume again. Well, it looks an aimless kick, but very often they're dangerous. But offside. Well, it looks as though he's giving a knock-on, I think. Yes, yeah, a knock-on, Alec. It'll be very interesting to Ray to see what happens with this uh, New Zealand side because I think uh, Kevin Tamati, who's coming on now, you see him just walk into your picture. I think uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see the big fella going off. Um, Graham. 
Yes, and I think this is a very, very serious blow for New Zealand. He looked to damage that right thigh when he made that tremendous burst down the middle. And what a round of applause this Kiwi captain's getting from the, the Headingley crowd here. I think it's more a, applause of relief than anything else. And I'm sure the coach there, Graham Lowe, he must be disappointed at that, Alec. Well, that's got to be a big blow, Ray. But, uh, you know, this is uh, what uh, Test football's all about. Uh, there's another man on his place there, this uh, Kevin Tamati. And uh, nobody could say you could be disappointed by bringing a player of his stature on the field. No, but I think he's a different type of player, Alec. Uh, Kevin's more of a, a robust, rough type of player. This, this boy, Graham, is a good runner, he's a ball distributor. And this is where I think the problem has been for Great Britain. But nevertheless, Kevin Tamati straight into the action. Good driving run, Sorensen. Friend. Oh, good, nice dummy. And certainly this Kiwi side come out with plenty of fire. Kevin Tamati. This player well known over here, been over with Widnes and Waddington for three or four seasons now. Very well known to the, the British crowds. And I think Kevin there playing the ball to himself, knocked on, a little bit impetuous, wanted to get into the game. He's been sat on the bench there for 40 minutes. And he's a lively, fiery customer. He's not one for sitting a match out. That's a good kick. Very good relieving kick there. Before Watkinson had to play the ball to friend. This is the player, I think, this number 13, Harry Pinner, who can open the sluice gates on this Kiwi side. He's the man who can pick out the opportunities. Tony Myra, pin it again. Well, he lost it, but he went behind him. Tony Myra playing the ball to himself. Oh, to Hanley. Good tackling. Six tackle coming up. Very strong defence from these Kiwis. To Burke. Oh, nice chip through from Burke, but good cover from Friend. Interesting to see, Alec, how the, the Kiwis play a sweeper all the time, isn't it? Yes, and it's, uh, he, this fellow's a good little player, Ray, but, uh, and that was a good little tackle as well to go on top of it. But uh, the Great Britain side now, what they've got to do is get back into the rhythm. They've not got to let New Zealand start dictating the play. Well, I think this is why we are putting the little, the little chip kicks through to stop uh, New Zealand dictating. Yes, and uh, that's nice to see, but I would like to see uh, a lot more if we had a little bit of ball. We've been playing uh, four or five minutes now, and I think we've only touched the ball once. Five minutes gone in this first match in this Whitbread Trophy Bitter Series. People said it would be a very, very close three-match series, and it certainly is. James Lulavai. Oh, good ball to Gary Prome. He's got O'Hara outside him, Burke to beat. Tremendous tackle from Mick Burke. Very strong, very powerful. Burke weighed him up, took him to the touchline. And you don't see much better fullback play than that. Very dangerous customer, this man O'Hara. Already picked up that try in the, the ninth minute. So five yards now from this. Great Britain line. Referee Barry Gummersell having a very, very fine game this this Yes, he's a very good referee. He keeps the game moving, Ray, um, and uh, this is what it's all about. The, this is why the spectators are enjoying it so much. Hume again. <laughs> Howie Tamati. New Zealand now, one yard from the line. To Kevin Tarrant. Oh, Clayton Friend looking for Philippina. Yes, a knockout. Well, a very difficult uh, pass to take there from Philippina. He had to bend very, very low for it. Hadn't got the agility. And a knockout. Much to the relief of Great Britain, I think. And it looks like another injury. 
This time, I think, to Howie Tamati, the hooker. Doing a good stint in the, the scrums there, this man, Howie Tamati. Already the scrums, two each at the moment. I don't think Howie Tamati will be bothered by this cold sponge. He's a freezing worker back in Auckland, so he should be used to the cold. driving the ball away from the acting half-back position. Sensible thing to do there, bringing the ball through the forwards here, letting Great Britain regroup to Fieldhouse. I think, Ray, if we can just weather another five minutes, because New Zealanders have put uh, Great Britain under a tremendous amount of pressure, I think uh, they could get away with this. They, they've got to do something and get out of this half as quickly as possible. Has Harry Pinner lost that ball? No, he's come up with it. I thought, I thought he'd lost it. To Tony Mai. To Hanley. Good tackle coming in there from Dean Bell. Spotted the overlap. Ball, good ball. Tony Mai then. I can't overestimate the number of tackles that this man Kurt Sobinson's putting in. He's certainly putting a few. Ah, a good full-back play from Gary Kendall. Right under the ball, never took his eye off it. Copy boot full-back play to any youngsters watching. To McGann. Both sides, I think, know the importance of a score at this stage. New Zealand still clinging to that two-point lead, 14 points to 12. And both packs just testing each other out again. To right, Kevin Tamati. Oh, good ball, O'Hara beats one man. But a good cover tackle from Ian Potter. That's good second row play, that, from the, the Great Britain number 12. It was a forward pass, but good cover. And interesting to see Alec uh, from the Australian referee, a free kick at that forward pass. Yes, and the reason he, he gave that free kick is that he thought that uh, it was a deliberate forward pass, and in Australia, they play that, and I think that's a very good rule. To Fox. I think Great Britain would be well advised to move this ball out wide. That's where they were making the breaks in that last ten minutes in the first half. I think also, Ray, if we do start moving the ball out, out wide, I think I'd like to see uh, a couple of the forwards who seem to be standing still about seeing people like Goodway, who's got the pace uh, to, to, to support in the moment. Yes, and that's what happens when you do stand around. New Zealand then now. To Tamati. Sorensen. McGann. Little bit of a low, I think, come over the game. Both packs, a little bit nervous of each other, both tentative, both defences on top. <laughs> Owen Wright. Good pass out to Tamati. We said this man, number 15, Kevin Tamati, liked to be in the rough and tumble of the match. He is already. Filipina. Lulawai. Oh, good tackle from Lee Crooks. Good covering tackle on his whole teammate, uh, James Lulawai. That's a high one. Oh, but Fox is there. To Crooks. Oh, he's got the half break, nobody with him. Well, this is what we were talking about, the Great Britain pack coming in ones, no support. This is better now, Pinner. Oh, good ball to Goodway. Oh, what a silly pass. No hope in the pass, only the second tackle. Really, lack of professionalism there on Goodway's part, he should have kept hold of the ball. 
Kiwi still on the attack now. To friend. Dane Sorensen. Up to Gary Pro. We've not seen a lot of this. Well, the crowd roaring for a knock-on there, but I think the referee judged he knocked it behind him, Alec. Well, he did knock it behind him, Ray, but uh, the game's gone a little bit scrappy at the moment. Both sides realised that the next score could be very, very important, and I think uh, New Zealand, they look a little bit tired to me. One or two players look as though they're carrying knocks. But I think uh, rather than tiring them even more, we're bringing the game back into the middle to their pack. Yes, and I, I just love to see, uh, you know, people like Drummond, they were flying machines and riding on the wings. I'd love to see them get a clear run at these fellas. Fieldhouse. But the defence is here, very, very strong. We certainly can't complain at the tackling from this Kiwi side to Potter. Looking for the gap. Oh, just no support coming. Fox to Goodway. Tony Myler. Oh, yes, he's got some space. He's got Gary Schofield with him. To Des Drummond now that he's got a clear field. The full back to beat. Gary Campbell. Oh, tremendous tackle. But he's still going. And that's what you call covering. Excellent cover tackle there from number four, Gary Brown. Great Britain now then, 10 yards from the line. To Tony Myler. Fox. Harry Pinner. Oh, good tackle. But a penalty. Yes, a penalty. Offside McGann coming in from an offside position. And it should be a kick at goal. Joe Lydon standing there. Well, he's wondering what to do. Surely they must go for goal. Yes, he's going for goal. Well, this is what we needed. I, I did say if this man got the ball and with the space, and we just watch him move. He's, he's very, very unlucky. He takes one man on and does him. Does he get up? He tries again. He's out in. That's good cover tackling from Dana Wara. So, Mick Burke then, another vital kick. Can he level the scores? It's one of those awkward ones, but really, for a, an international goal kicker, there should be no problems, and there isn't. So, we're all square now in the second half. 14 points each. Tremendous battle. Great Britain substitute uh, Chris Arkwright coming into the fray and Lee Crooks the prop going off. Well, Lee Crooks has had a tremendous game so far, he's had a steadying influence, but I do think that Arkwright, who normally plays in a standoff position, will bring a bit of pace to this pack. It could be a shrewd move, that, I think, Alec. Yes, uh, because Chris Outright's a very, very strong boy, and he, he'll, he'll be there just to settle things down. Just looking at one or two of the New Zealand players, Ray, they, they look as though they, they're carrying little knocks, and uh, I've got a feeling now that if Great Britain moved this ball about, there's going to be big trouble here. Tony Myler, then. Oh, he's got space! Can Ellery Hanley get with him? A nice little chip kick, it's a race. Campbell. Oh, good covering. There again, the value of a good fullback. Gary Campbell covering back. But this crowd now roaring Great Britain on. This is their opportunity. And I think the Kiwis at the moment missing the captaincy, missing the inspiration of Mark Graham. But just look at those white shirts there. Again. Oh, that's a good kick. Well, 
that's a crunching kick there from this loose forward Hume again. His team were in trouble, they were at sixes and sevens, and he puts them back downfield 50 yards. Good rugby there. A killer kick, Alec. Well, that, that is the, the mark of class players, and uh, number 13, uh, Hugh McGann, can do things like that, but Great Britain now, I've got a feeling, can smell blood, and if they do keep moving this ball about, I think they could uh, cause a big upset, Ray. Well, it's a penalty to New Zealand, differential penalty again, must take the tap or kick to touch. And I'm pretty sure Owen Wright will just very casually just plop this ball into touch, and he does. New Zealand now on the attack, using these big forwards again, Kurt Sorensen. to Tamati. Good tackling from Ian Potter there, straight down the legs, copybook stuff. Howie Tamati. And certainly so far, this Great Britain defence has been up to it. Oh, good, solid shoulder charge there from Gaines Sorensen. Back to Fred. To Owen Wright. Oh, here's a chance, Kurt Sorensen, is he over? Yes, referee looking for confirmation, and he's given it. The size, the strength we mentioned early on, this man, Kurt Sorensen, quick played the ball, and he was over. And I think that was the difference. The Great Britain pack giving away a stoner man here when they get near to the line. They've always got problems with a man of this size. And it's the old, old story, a good player the ball here, and as he holds it here right, just how long he holds the ball, and as he's a big man, this Sorensen, brushes one very feeble tackle on, Burke tries to turn him on his back, but just couldn't do it. And this is, again, this is where you see the player the ball, quick hands, inside again from right, flipping the ball outside, there's always many support, and as he gets up to play this ball, this is where we get the try from. It's very, very important that you keep your eye on the ball, and here it is now, Wright slips the ball in, big man Sonnison, little bit of slip shot tackling, and in the end, lucky to put the ball down. Yes, I think he was lucky, uh, Alec, there was a, a hint, a, a doubt there as to whether he got the ball down, but referee Gummerson was on the spot. So Filipina then, looking to add to that solitary goal, no, well, that's the third time we've hit the posts this afternoon. Two from Burke, one from Filipina. And so, still, with 20 minutes to go in this half, just one try difference between them. New Zealand 18, Great Britain 14. Well, it's not gone 10 yards. And a penalty. Tony Myler there, not judging the kickoff. The ball must go ten yards. And I think that try there from the Kiwis indicated the depth of experience in this side. A lot of very strong professionalism players here. Of course, New Zealand sides in the past have been all amateur sides, except for the occasional professional player, but most of these players now are fully professionals. Oh, good passing, Philippine. <laughs> to Tamati. Had a good, strong, bustling game, this lad Kevin Tamati, since his arrival on the field from skipper Mark Graham. Kurt Sorensen again to Owen Wright. And I just get the feeling at this stage now that this big, rough New Zealand pack is taking some holding, the lighter Great Britain side, having a lot of tackling to do. But six tackle coming up. That's an accurate one. All well taken by Burke. 
He kept his eye on the ball, he threw that big frame of his at the ball, and he came up with it. Andy Goodway. Not seen much of this uh, Andy Goodway so far. Though. No, I, I must say, Ray, that he's had a very, very quiet game. But uh, what a Great Britain have got to start, uh, start doing now is that... Uh, New Zealand, when they get the ball, the support in the man, there's always somebody in support, and I think we've got to do this, and when we get the ball out wide, we've got to use the wingmen. To Leiden. Well, it pushes New Zealand back, but easily picked up by Gary Campbell. O'Hara with him. Good tackle by Fox. To pro. You see, this is the difference, I think, in New Zealand, the support player. Many pundits, of course, have held this Kiwi side as the world champion since they defeated Australia in the third test in the series last season, 18 points to nil. And it certainly at times looked like it. Good ball to take hold of though. Tony Myler now. To Goodway. Well, he's standing still. The ball's not coming out. It's not moving. Watkinson. To Hanley. Arkwright. Well, that's three tackles used, Alec, and we've not gone ten yards. It's three tackles used, and not only that, when you see people like Elry Anley attacking half-back, it makes you worry a little bit. He's got to be one of the men, and this fella here is going to run with the ball. Des Drummond now. To Fieldhouse. Oh, that's a dangerous ball to Burke. And again, Dean Bell. What a fine defensive wing round this number two is. He spotted again that Burke could have had an overlap, and he came in. Britain still on the attack, to Fox. Pinner, Potter. No. Kurt Sorensen. Ooh, David Watkinson, number nine, I think. The Hulkinson Rovers getting a little frustrated with Sorensen. Really dumped him down there. To McGann. I think he took a knock on his head, did McGill. Gary Prohm. Filipina. And I think this is one of the big differences between the two sides. New Zealand keeping the ball moving, moving it out wide. Just look at them here. One pass, 35 yards. And the support player, Gary Kemble. But a knock on, no advantage. Just still one try in it, 15 minutes to go, New Zealand, 18 points to 14. These Kiwis, they were the favourites for this first test. Oh, that's a good heel. Tony Myler. Actually, Tony Myler did very well to hold on to that ball. Uh, there was a chance of an interception. Akra to Fox. Yes, referee Marie Grimmelson right on the spot. Kevin Tamati and Kurt Sorensen. I said this was a rough, tough lad. And a penalty. So Great Britain now looking for something, something to pull them out of the fire. Watkinson to take the time. Oh, Fieldhouse, good break. To Watkinson. Just couldn't get away. Excellent tap penalty move there. Spotted the gap. And a penalty. Yes, holding him down, Kevin Tamati. 
Losing his temper a little bit, I think, Kevin. Yes, with his elbow. And he's giving him five minutes in the sim bin, I think. Now then, here's an opportunity for Great Britain. So Kevin Tamate holding the player down and using his elbow to hold him down. And this is what the penalty was for, as John Fieldhouse here goes through with the ball here. Just watch Kevin Tamate, he's the man who lies on top. And the ball is still down, here he comes in now, Kevin. Now as the ball is played up, he holds him, Kevin goes in. Now it's when he, this is the position where the man gives the penalty foul. Just watch his arm. And that is what the penalty was for. And it's Joe Lydon to take the kick, and it's a successful one. So, Joe Lydon's first kick of the afternoon, taking them instead of McMurk, accurate and true. And Great Britain come back again, 18-16 now to the Kiwis. And I still get the feeling that that Great Britain can win this game if only they'll let these two centres, Hanley and Schofield, get the ball. Whenever it's gone out there wide, they've got the gaps, they've picked up the tries. But there's been an overemphasis, I think, on too much forward play. And if you notice, Ray, then, if you watch Daddy Pinner, then, he is carrying a leg, he's had a dead leg, and uh, I think it, it, this is having an effect on him, because he's, he's drifted out of the game, and once he stopped playing, our three-quarters and fourth stopped running. Fieldhouse now. Well, this lad's kept running all the game, he's a strong lad. This is his first attempt at prop four, and he's done very, very well. Pinner now, to Burke. to Tony Miner. Gary Schofield. Oh, good tackle. You can very well police this, this lad Schofield by the Kiwi, Gary Pro. Oh, that's a straightforward, simple kick. Gratefully received by Gary Pro and Kemble. Just two points in the match. Are we talented? New Zealand, of course, with just 12 men on the field at the moment. Kevin Tamate, five minutes in bin for interference at the play of the ball. Sinbin, of course, a player can be sent off for five or ten minutes for any interferences. Ten minutes left in the game, just those two vital points the Kiwis are clinging to. And who knows, Alec, those two penalty misses of Mick Burks could be costly now. Well, we did say, Ray, that they could be costly, but I don't think this game's over yet, and uh, we've got to let people that like this fella get the ball and do what he's best at running with it. Oh, tremendous piece of rugby there from Drummond. Confidence from the lad. Now here's a chance. Chris Arkwright to Ellery Hanley. He's got Joe Lydon on his outside. He's going himself. Oh, this is the chance. Ellery Hanley's going all the way. Inside to Lydon and he's got it. A magnificent try. Oh, yes, a try that came out to nothing. A hundred yards combination. It started with Des Drummond. What confidence the lad had to keep the ball to himself on his own line. And there is Drummond himself, and it ended up on the other wing with Joe Lydon. We won't see a better try than that for years and years. And there that man, Ellery Hanley, he had the size, he had the strength to keep going. And I thought Joe Lydon wasn't going to get all of that ball, he hovered in the air, but he picked it up. Magnificent, and just look at Barry Gummers for the referee. Well, didn't he enjoy that, Alec? Ellery Hanley acknowledging the crowd. Yes, <laughs> he's clapping himself, a real character, this lad. And the goal kick should be a comfortable one. Great Britain then taking the lead, 20 points to 18. And 
Well, might that New Zealand side be in a huddle behind the posts? They know that suddenly from out and out attack, they had a try put past them. And he gets it. So huge roar from this crowd then. Leiden scoring the try, scoring the goal. At 22 points to 18 now. Well, if you're all running your video sets, I think you should record this try for posterity because this is a tremendous try. Just look how strong this little fella is. And watch how he does to James Lulai. He's got a lot of pace. There's a lot of thought goes into this as well. He comes over now, just wants to pass. Absolutely inch perfect. And only a world-class player can support like this fella does. Joe Lydon, this has got to be one of the tries of the century. Potter driving away then now. Seven minutes to go then now. Great Britain in the driving seat. Four points. But of course, there can be no slip ups, there can be no mistakes. A try and a goal can eradicate that. To Hanley again. Fox. Oh, he's lost it. Kurt Sonson. I think you'll see a little bit now, Ray, about uh, what New Zealand think about going behind because they know that they've got to get back now as quickly as possible and you'll think they throw everything into attack. And certainly, Alec, they've got some star performers in here to pull a try out of nothing. Clayton Friend, weaving, dodging, but there's that man Fieldhouse again. Andy and Potter, these two lads, brought in for their tackles and I'm sure when Coach Morris Bamford's checking the tackle count, they'll be up near the top. Sorensen now just edging over the 25 yard area to Owen Wright now this could be very dangerous six tackle coming up now I'm sure that Clayton friend the keen scrum half he lost this in the air no he's an extra pass to Dean Bell Luluan all oh, good chip and a good tackle well, six more tackles. Ball hit the Great Britain man, Philip Heiner. Some good, solid British Lion tackling needed here now. All that practice on the tackling pads, this is where it counts. Three tackles to go. Howie Tamati going for the line. Just a yard short. Two tackles. To Sorensen. Philippine, can he use his weight? No, he's down. And the sixth tackle. Good defensive stint here from Great Britain. To friend. Oh, it's a nice one. But it's dead. Well judged by Mick Burke, I think, Alec. Yes, it, 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 it must feel like Dunkirk for the lads at the moment. Uh, the, the New Zealand boys are putting a tremendous amount of pressure on him. But that was class from Mick Burke. He just let the ball, looked as though he was going to take it, and calmly let it go dead. Just four minutes to go now in this first test in this Whitbread Trophy Bitter Series and what a competition we've got in our hands. If the other two tests which are being broadcast live in Grandstand in November are as good as this, well, we've got some good rugby league. Tony Meyer. To Harry Pinner. Sure, Alec. I think uh, this ball should be kicked very, very deep. Well, tactics have got to come into the game now, Ray, but I think you'll find it going down the field any moment, and uh, the Great Britain tackling has been fairly good, so for the last three minutes, that's all we've got to do, is get up there and get up Oh, well, he's got away. He's still going, Drummond's in. Well picked up by Gary Prohn. To Dean Bell. What a last-ditch effort here, to Friend. Well, we talked about the class in this New Zealand side. There are some star performers can still pull this game out of the bag. Kurt Sorensen. To Lulawai. He's in. Yes, under the posts. James Lulawai in the centre position. 
Christian took the shot ball. And it's 22 22. All hinges on the goal kick. Three minutes to go from sudden ecstasy from this British crowd and tremendous work from the Great Britain side. The sheer class of New Zealand has come back. But for me, the significant factor again was the size and the strength of that man down in the middle, Kurt Sorensen. Well, I feel sorry for Great Britain here, because just watch Sorensen. If this ball is not forward, I'd be very, very surprised. Just look where the ball goes. And if that ball wasn't a yard forward, well, I'll leave you together for yourselves. Well, there's an Australian referee in charge, Alec. He's independent, he didn't give a forward. And this is the goal, perhaps, that this first test will hinge on. 22 points each. A lot of pressure on this Olsen for the He stubs it, and it's over. So New Zealand then, edge out now, 24-22, and two minutes left to play, and I'm sure a cracking two minutes. And I think, I think this youngster, Derek Fox, 20 years of age, he's only five foot five, but I'm sure he'll want to put every pound into this ball and get it deep into this Kiwi half. Tamati, oh, good tackle from Goodway. I think uh, Kevin Tamati twisted his knee in the progress there. The crowd getting a little bit upset, but of course the referee Barry Gomesel will have asked the timekeepers to stop the watches. To Owen Wright. Clayton Friend. Clayton Friend. He'll just want to keep hold of this ball now. It's a, only a two-point lead, but it's as good as a 20-point lead when in possession. Friend again. And the sixth tackle coming up. Great Britain will be wanting to get this ball. They'll be wanting to run it from anywhere. To Burke. Now then, what can... Coming up to normal time, but in injury time now. Four tackles for Great Britain to pull that two points back to Pinner. No. Three tackles to go. Seconds ticking away here now in injury time. Ian Potter... Pinner. Oh, good ball from Pinner to Fox. He's got Tony Myler. Still going. Oh, he's lost it. With Schofield to Drummond. Oh, just couldn't get hold of it. But he's still going. No. Six tackle. There's the hooter. Just not sufficient time. But what a test match. What a test match that was. New Zealand, I think, just about deserving that by 24 points to 22.